Hi, I'm Sam Dealey, comedian and author of the webcomic Wahooligan. Over the years, um, a number of people have told me that they really enjoy the art in my comics, and so I thought I would put together a little tutorial with some of the uh, tricks and techniques that I've developed sort of through trial and error for uh, using vector tools in the art program to speed up the drawing process. So let's get into it. I'll be using Manga Studio for this tutorial, although I think many of the techniques should be applicable to other software like Photoshop or Paint Tool SAI. If you're thinking, why vectors? That's a good question. And the simple answer is it saves time. We all know traditional comic illustration is done in stages. You start with a pencil sketch like this one, then you ink it, and finally move to colors. That's a real labor-intensive workflow that most comic illustrators bring with them to digital illustration, but I've found it's a lot faster to use a vector layer and go straight to inking. If I work it right, I can even place some of the flat colors at the same time. So here I've got some inks and some flat colors that I've already drawn, and I'm going to zoom in on the face so we can look at the lines that I've drawn here, and you'll notice that um, the initial line drawings are often rather rough. They maybe need some cleanup. And the vector tools make it really pretty quick and easy to clean them up just the same way that you clean up a pencil sketch by drawing the inking the lines over the top of it. This first tool I've used here is called Simplify Vector Line. It smooths over a line that you've drawn by removing most of the anchor points, but sometimes the anchor points that it leaves aren't necessarily the proper width, and the, the, the weight of your line looks weird because you'll have areas where it's too thin or areas where it's too thick. The point width tool is a quick way to resolve those line thickness issues after you've already simplified a line. There are two kinds of anchor points. There are curve anchors and corner anchors that give you angles for geometric shapes. In this case, the simplify line tool left me corners where I want curves, so I used the convert point tool to switch them. That still wasn't quite right, so I used the add point tool to refine those curves. On the neck here, I've got some lines that are too long, which brings me to one of my favorite tools, the vector eraser. This allows me to draw my lines quick and bold without worrying about these overlaps because I come back and a quick swipe with the vector eraser removes everything past the intersection of those lines. This is one of the biggest time savers because it means I don't have to be careful either with the brush or with the eraser. I've already added flat colors here, but sometimes the fill tool can get tedious. You can reduce the amount of filling needed by selecting the transparent color on the left and painting transparency over a longer line. This is better than using an eraser because both the transparent line and the interrupted line are still solid lines on your vector layer and you can move and change them as needed. This gets really useful if you copy and paste these vectors for another page later. I like to give my characters elbows because they make better slave labor that way, but sometimes I don't want two separate lines for the arm, so I'll draw my elbow and then paint transparency over that section of the line of the arm. You see it cuts into the elbow line too, so I cut the elbow line and then immediately paste it so the elbow line is on top of the transparent line. But you see that I wasn't careful when I sketched the arm, and I already have two lines, so I use the Connect Line tool to join them. Sometimes a large part of a line will be too thick or thin, and the Point Width tool becomes tedious. In that case, the Width Brush allows you to fix several points with one stroke. A huge time saver for me is drawing faces on a separate layer. That way I can change the expression without disturbing the flat flesh color underneath. Here I've drawn a couple eyes that aren't quite complete. Those gaps will be a problem for the fill tool later. I could use the connect line tool, but there's another option. Brushes in Manga Studio have a vector magnet property that connects a new line to an existing one if you draw them end to end. This 
is an okay face using the usual vector layer with raster colors underneath. Another option that's good for faces that are further away or comedic is to use another vector layer with a border on it. This allows me to create the lines and the color with one stroke. You can see I made the border too thick, so I can reduce the thickness of the border in the layer properties on the right. Then I can change the width of the vector line to make you sorry for him because he's a hideous monster. I can use the same bordered vector layer to draw the mouth. Admittedly, simpler mouth shapes are easier with this method, but I can make more complex mouth shapes by selecting the transparent color like I did before and painting transparency over part of the mouth. Oh god, the eyebrows! Fix the eyebrows! I know you've been staring at them this whole time and it's been gnawing at you like an itch you can't scratch. Fine. Pretty easy. I can use the width brush like before to adjust several points until I like it. Alternatively, if I want the eyebrows to match his hair, I can draw them on the border layer with the eyes and the mouth. This lets me draw the line and the color with one stroke, and if I need to reshape the eyebrows, I won't have to bother with flats. This is also a great way to show you how much time you save with these vectors. Here, I'll draw some colored eyebrows the usual way, and you can see just how tedious this becomes. I really don't need three minutes adjusting lines and laying flats. I just want my character to be able to express surprise without working 80 hours a week. We all hate drawing backgrounds, right? It's tedious, it takes forever, and when you're done, nobody really cares. One vector layer with a border can really speed up drawing something like a window frame, but it looks a little flat, right? Making that window frame pop is super easy. You just copy the lines to another bordered vector layer, add a couple of transparent lines, and you're golden. That's one window. What about hundreds of windows? My old nemesis, cityscapes. Before, I would draw a ton of grid lines on the side of the building and then use the vector eraser to cut through concrete gaps before flatting each individual window. My god, this is tedious. Not to mention, it's error prone. Well, there's a fairly simple solution to this, too. Draw some vertical lines on your bordered layer, Add some horizontal lines to create your high-rise window grid, then use the free transform tool to fit your perspective. Let's get back to our hapless hero. I'm always finding new uses for the bordered vector layer. Here I'll use it to draw the chair behind our hero, and then I'll use another bordered layer above that to draw the ropes. Painting a couple strokes with transparency quickly turns those round ends into squares. Like these ropes, the bordered vector layer is great for zippers, belts, wires, buttons, and a host of other thin or small items. To make these ropes look a little more three-dimensional, I simplify the line and then narrow the ends to points and adjust them so it looks like the rope is wrapping around the side of the chair. Once I've made the first rope, I can copy, paste, and adjust for the additional lengths. I also like a vector layer for cell shading. Just change the layer blend mode to multiply, pick a light gray color, and paint your shadows. 
I find it easier to paint the shadow sloppy and then paint transparency over the places where the shadows bleed. Who doesn't love a beard? My wife for one, but that's not stopping me. Anyway, like I said, I find, keep finding all sorts of different uses for the bordered vector layer and uh, facial hair just happens to be one of them. I'm drawing this mustache and beard real quick and sloppy. It's not really uh, coming out real nice. It's looking pretty horrible, but uh, I have actually found that, and you know, with the right facial hair, the uh, or the right hair, that uh, the bordered vector layer actually can can make it pretty quick and easy to get the right that right look that you're that you're looking for, um, and you don't have to spend a lot of time futzing around with. The, the little ends of the points of hair that's sloppy and so forth. So that's about it uh, for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, I guess I will be talking to you soon. Leave comments. I'm available to answer any questions that you might have. Thanks.